Yeah, Bob, I miss the old green machine. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. I, of course, am your host, Al Omega, the alpha and omega of all things science fiction and horror. Tonight, we have a movie from a very interesting time in American history. This movie comes to us from the early 70s, when cable was just making its inroads into America. Now, that may not sound like a big deal to you, but cable was trying to, even back in the 70s, say they were going to give us everything we wanted right now. More like what it is now, but it took them, you know, 40-something years to get there. Now, a lot of people said, well, if you want to see something really nice, you go to the theater. Well, with this, you didn't have to. You could watch nice stuff at home. And they started the made-for-TV movies, which is what we have here, a made-for-TV movies. Now, this was usually made with people who were on contract anyway, so they didn't have a choice. They were done on the back lot, which was there no matter what. And so they tended to be shot fairly simply. You usually had a couple of the older actors, like I said, that'd be on contract, and maybe one or two new people come up and coming, or maybe even a new up and coming cameraman or director, to see how it all worked out. And that gave us do not fold, spindle, or mutilate. Now this comes to us from 1971. And in 1971, hmm, wow, in 1971, if you bought a good calculator, and there really, really were only good calculators, there are very few not good calculators, if you bought a scientific calculator, how about that? Um, that could cost you a couple of grand, and a new car could be, you know, three or four thousand dollars. So, they were expensive beasts. Boy, those come down. You get those at the dollar store now. And computers were huge. In the movie Hidden Figures, they have an entire room for the computer. What a shame. The door is too small to get the parts in. I love that scene. But that's what it was like. So, in the early 70s, if you were exposed to a computer, usually you saw a punch card. The old punch card machines. Some of which were still in service in the into the 21st century. And that's where we get tonight's title, Do Not Fold, Spindle, or Mutilate. Now, this was directed by Ted Post, who left us in 2013, sadly. But he did some good work. He did Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Baby, and Arc 2, which was a live-action Saturday morning kids' show. It was a happy post-apocalyptic series, so we're going to show you that. Also an army vet. This was written by John D.F., Black, who left us in 2018, sadly, and he worked on Star Trek, the original series, Next Generation, Clone Master, something we may get to have here one day, and Patrick Duffy in Man from Atlantis. There we go. So he wrote some stuff that was not used for something completely schlocky. Now, as I said, a lot of these made-for-TV movies used actors and actresses that were on contract. And our, our main characters in this, well, they're certainly at the end of their careers, uh, and we're still working vigorously. In the part of Sophie, we have Helen Hayes, a name. All these names should sound familiar. She left us in 93, and she did One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing, Herbie Rides Again. Both of those, I believe, were Disney vehicles in more than one way, if you've seen them. She was also on Highway to Heaven. She's considered the preeminent U.S. stage actress of her time, and was the first lady of American theater. She had worked for over 80 years, and when she passed away, Broadway, the great wide way itself, dimmed its lights for one minute at 8 o'clock. Man, I wish people would do stuff like that for me. But of course, she was one of only 17 people to win the trifecta of awards. She won the Oscar, the Emmy, and the Tony. She always said that if you rest, you rust. Well, I hope she's resting now, because I doubt she can rust. Now, in the part of Evelyn, we have Myrna Loy. There's a name that should come, bring back some memories for some of you, and others will have no idea what we're talking about. 
She left us in 93, and she did movies like Ants, which we might get to have here. Airport, uh, the first one that started so many. She started off in the silent movies. Noah's Ark was one of her first pieces, where she played the slave exotic dancing girl. I'm glad that was a long time ago, because I don't want to see her do this stuff now. She started off being uh, hmm, young party girl characters, and as she got older, got to segue into mature heroines, very solid people. She survived breast cancer twice back when that was a hard thing to do. Still not easy. Still thinking of you, Vanessa. And she once said, life isn't about having and getting. It's about being and becoming. And I've always thought that was a wonderful sentiment. Because I got a few people I know I want them to become something. Now, in the part of Shelby, we have Eli Wallach in drag. Just kidding. I've always thought that uh, this, this lady looked like Eli Wallach. I'm talking about Mildred Natwick, who left us in 94. She certainly did a lot of uh, TV work, especially in her later days. Alice, Trapper John, MD, Magnum P.I. She's probably most famous, though, for her, her movie with Danny Kaye, where they did the bit about the vessel with the pestle as the potion with the poison. I don't want to know how long it took to get that out properly. Back when diction was king, before mumble rap was even thought of. There's an episode of Sliders where they go to a world where education is everything, and even the gangsters are rapping about Keats and Longfellow. I wish we could go to that world. Uh, her first part in any movie, though, was she played a floozy. But she was a very late bloomer when it came to films. She was on stage. But she was considered one of uh, the finest character actresses in America. Did a lot of very different parts. Now, in the part of Elizabeth, we have Sylvia Sidney. Maybe the name doesn't sound familiar, but gosh, the voice certainly should. Uh, she left us in 99 and did Mars Attacks. Beetlejuice, and Super Train, something none of you have seen, which is a shame because it's got Barbara Eden in her underwear and then her mom complained that she wasn't wearing her good bra. She was said to have the saddest eyes in Hollywood. She's an authoress and has written several books, therefore, does Needlepoint, and she was Max Factor's Star of the Year in 1934, back when Max was still alive. Now, uh, she was in a, a movie about Japan called Butterfly, I think. I haven't seen it. Apparently the movie did very poorly, but only her part was considered worthwhile to see. And I don't know if this next bit is good or bad, but apparently a Japanese company has made a brand of condoms called Sylvia Sidney's. I don't know why. Makes me want to go see the movie now. You know, because in her later years, she certainly would make a great contraceptive. But uh, back when she was young, she was quite the cutie. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that that was it. When she was young, she was beautiful and seductive. So with that said, let's get into tonight's movie, Please Don't Fold, Spindle, or Mutilate from 1971. Try saying all of that fast three times. For millions of years, Earth was fertile and rich. Then pollution and waste began to take their toll. Civilization fell into ruin. This is the world of the 25th century. Only a handful of scientists remain who have vowed to rebuild what has been destroyed. This is their achievement. A mobile storehouse of scientific knowledge. Art II, manned by a highly trained crew of young people. Their mission, to help bring the hope of a new future to mankind. Part 2 Log, entry number one. I, Jonah, Ruth, Samuel, and Adam are fully aware of the dangers we face as we venture into unknown, maybe even hostile areas. But we're determined to bring the promise of a new civilization to our people and our planet. Part 2 Log. Entry 4 0 
five. I am now approaching a village where slavery is rumored to exist. If the rumor proves true, our mission will be to put an end to this miserable and immoral practice. In this new world, we are helping to rebuild. There is no room for slavery. Jonah to Ark. This is Jonah calling the Ark. Yes, Jonah. This may be it. I think I see Baron Vargas. Can you give us your location? Uh, just a minute. Until you finish work. Please. I'm so thirsty. Back to work. Guards, make them work as late as possible today. The field must be ready for planting by the new moon. Finish in time, and I will give you two full days of rest. Now work. I'm actually looking at people who have become slaves. I better give you my location. I'm in Sector 6. Jonah! Jonah! Ruth, change the power on panel 4. Jonah! Ah, he should be good for plenty of work. Hope you don't have too big an appetite. <laughs> found them spying on us, Baron Vargas. Good. We can use another strong back. By what right do you keep these people in slavery? It has nothing to do with right. Only fear, my boy. Put him to work, Cyrus. Jonah, do you hear me? Jonah, come in. Face the town. We've lost him. Mm -mm. I'm not giving up that easy. Radar feedback from the Romer. Temperature from the heat sensor is good. Good. He's somewhere in area 64. Not much to go on. Not much to go on? Sam, you're a genius. Area 64, here we come. Why did you come near the Baron's border? To help you and the others. No one can help us. Why? There's something you must understand about the Baron. He has magic powers. If a slave disobeys him, he takes that man and turns him into an animal. Well, that's impossible. Oh, no, we've seen it. He's turned Gideon's sister into a rabbit. He's done it to others. Then he takes them away and we never see them again. Well, there's so many of you. So few guards. Why haven't you banded together and thrown Vargas out? Every time we plan to escape, the Baron hears about it. There's a traitor among us, but we don't know who it is. 
What if I challenged the Baron? Would your people follow if I land? Yes. We all want to be free men again. I want to see this man's magic. When's the best time? On the way to the feeding. Spread the word to the others. If we do it quickly, maybe your traitor won't have time to tell the Baron about our plan. I hope so. Be careful. Do you see anything, Ruth? Not yet. Hey, wait a minute! What is it? Oh, the most beautiful sight in the world next to Jonah. Straight ahead, Samuel. We're getting close. Why are you two men talking? I asked where I could get some water. Water? There's no water until the work is done. You know that, Gideon. Why didn't you tell him? I forgot, sir. Now I'll have to remind you of our rules. You come with me. Now, tell me what's going on. Well, nothing, Baron Vargas. You weren't talking to the new slave about water. Yes. Yes, I was. Gideon, don't lie to me. I changed your sister into a rabbit. And I won't change her back into a human being unless you tell me everything. Just like you've always told me what the slaves are planning. Now, what'll it be? You do want to see your sister someday, don't you? Yes, sir. The new slave, Jonah, he'll lead the others against you tonight on the way to the feeding. Excellent. That's all I need to know, Gideon. You can go back now. And Gideon, I'm thinking of making you a guard. And I may even let you see your sister again. Wouldn't you like that? Yes, sir. would like to speak to you. Yeah! Yeah! Baron Vargas! Who dares shout and demand my presence? Jonah dares. And I speak for all of us. Yeah! Yeah! We're here to say that we will no longer obey you or your guards. No. No. Is that right, Jonah of the Ark? No man has a right to hold other men as slaves. No! no. Are you coming up here to challenge my power? Yes. From now on, these people are all free men and women. Yeah! I've heard enough. Come one step closer, my friend, and I'll turn you into a bird. You'll be like a chicken in a coop for the rest of your life. Ask them, they know! Come on, Gideon. Gideon, are you with me? Don't do it, Jonah! No, 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 no. Yeah. 
Your days as a tyrant are over. They are not. Hello, Jonah of the Ark. I warned him, didn't I? Never disobey Baron Vargas. Guards! Don't even feed them slop tonight. Take them away! Take one more look, you animals! And shriek before the power of Baron Vargas. a stunt. He's not fooling anybody. He's fooling them, unfortunately. Not for long. Ten to one, join us under that platform. So, that's what you think, eh? You sure you don't want to talk about this? I love good conversation. Uh... <laughs> young people dressed like that new slave Jonah you idiots you let them get away well, they'll be back this time be ready for them or it will not go well with you yes sir I've got to tell you that Baron Vargas really scares me I just hope we can pull this one off we've got to do you want to go over the scan again, or do you have it memorized? I got it memorized. How about you, Adam? Can you take care of your end? Because if they catch you, we've had it. They never catch me. This what I do. Okay. Did you reprogram the force field activator? Yep. This is gonna make the Baron's head spin around. If Vargas uses his magic to keep people locked up, we'll use our magic to set them free. Let's go. Good morning, my fine feathered friend. How is your chicken coop? I've had worse. Aren't you risking it? Letting people see me? I told my slaves and my guards that I'm giving you one more chance as a human being. <laughs> and by the way, we almost caught your friends yesterday. If I do catch them, I plan to sell all of you off separately to other villages. So that's how you really make people disappear. Exactly. Wait till I tell your slaves. They'll never believe you. I tried to convince him. Gideon! Hello, Jonah. You're the informer. On the contrary, he's a loyal subject. Say hello to your sister, Gideon. <laughs> Gideon, why? I have to do what he says, or I'll never see my sister again. I saw what he did to you. He did nothing. It's a trick. Help me get out of here and I'll show you. You can't defeat him. He has magic. That's exactly what he wants you to believe. He keeps you enslaved through your own superstition. You must fight your fear. 
Otherwise, none of you will be free. Gideon! Good work, Adam. You there. You know the rule. Away from there. Cyrus. Who is that little one? I've never seen him before. I don't know. Hey, little man. Come over here. Go get him. Stop those others. <laughs> Try over there. Guards! Find him. Uh, uh, uh. I'm glad to see you two. I've got the force seal activator. That'll give us some power over Vargas. Good thinking, Samuel. Good work. As long as I can get some help from my friend Gideon. Help me. This time, I will not turn him back into a human. This time, I will make an example of him, so that all of you... Friends, the Baron is an evil trickster. He has no real power, only the ability to create fear in his fellow man. Come up here and we'll see, Mr. Rockman. Should I step right here, Baron? Oh. See, nothing happens. Just a trap door, some smoke, and some birds fly out. Come closer, my friend, and we'll see how brave you are without your flying machine. Throw the net! No, Gideon! Help me! Gideon, throw the net! <laughs> Capture him! <laughs> Now it's time for some of my magic, Baron Vargas. Force field, don't fail us now. How's this trick, Baron? Just a man. Yeah. Where is my sister and the others you sent away? In a scavenger camp, downriver. Well, get them back. Now that you know Vargas for what he really is, 
He can no longer do you any harm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And now for my last trick. <laughs> Arc 2 log, entry 406. The people of the village are free again. They know now that only their own superstition and fear kept them enslaved. Never again will they allow one man to control their lives. For unlimited power in the hands of one man makes him a tyrant and slaves of us all. Who's the bravest of the brave? Who's the strongest of the strong? Who's the friend of serf and slave? Who will fight to right or wrong? Who was sworn to serve his king? Who can make a broadsword sing? Lancelot, Sir Lancelot, King Arthur's bravest knight. A dragon came to Camelot, fell upon the town, devoured all the cattle, burned the houses down. The call went out for Lancelot, who mounted his great steed, a pointed lance, a singing sword, and Camelot was freed. Who's the bravest of the brave? Who's the strongest of the strong? Who's the friend of serf and slave? Who will fight to right or wrong? Who was sworn to serve his king? Who can make a broadsword sing? Lancelot, Sir Lancelot, King Arthur's bravest knight. The robbers watched the highway, robbing all who passed. King Arthur then decided they had robbed their last. He called upon Sir Lancelot, who donned his silver mail. He trapped the robbers one by one and brought them all to jail. Who's the bravest of the brave? Who's the strongest of the strong? Who's the friend of serf and slave? Who will fight to right or wrong? Who is sworn to serve his king? Who can make a broadsword sing? Lancelot, Sir Lancelot! King Arthur's bravest knight. Fair Guinevere was captured by a knight dressed all in black. The round table was called to meet and plan a bold attack. Sir Lancelot stepped forward and announced to one and all, I'll save the fair maid Guinevere. This is my duty's call. He mounted up his charger and rode across the plains. A song upon his lips, hero's blood ran through his veins. One morning as the sun came up, he found the Black Knight's lair. And Lancelot, brave Lancelot, rescued his lady fair. Who's the bravest of the brave? Who's the strongest of the strong? Who's the friend of serf and slave? Who will fight to right or wrong? Who was sworn to serve his king? Who can make a broadsword sing? Lancelot, Sir Lancelot, King Arthur's bravest knight.
Sophie T. Wood. With a see-through blouse. Sophie T. Remember, love, the meek may inherit the earth, but they won't enjoy it. <laughs> Rest these weary bones. I was so embarrassed. That woman looked exactly like Mrs. Simmons from Omaha. You think I really should have bought that cardigan, Elizabeth? Oh, it would look charming on you. Really? Good afternoon, ladies. It's so nice to see you again. Three beers for my cohorts and a double old fashioned for me. I'm driving. <laughs> it just wouldn't be Tuesday if you didn't come in, Miss Curtis. How's your mother, Trudy? Oh, wasting away to nothing. But the doctor says she's going to be okay. Oh, dear. We all have our troubles. Uh, guess what the special is for today? Salmon aspic. Tomato surprise. Yuck. Two coffees and two hot teas? I'd rather the double old-fashioned. <laughs> the poor dear's mother is going to outlive us all. How was your turkey sandwich last time, Shelby? Oh, I'm thinking about having it again. Are you going to tell us soon whether or not you got it, Sophie T., or am I going to have... When I say I'll do something, I do it. How? Got what? The application for the computer dating club. I just walked in and asked for it. Swear, I completely slipped my mind. I finally talked her out of putting her own name on it. Are we really going to send it in? Of course. How would we get any answers if we didn't? And wait till you hear some of the questions... This is so exciting. Uh, do you believe in intimate contact before marriage? The answers are yes, no, and depends on the circumstances. I think depends on the circumstances. You don't. Oh, not me personally, dear. The girl we're making up is going to join this silly thing. Well, depending on the circumstances means the thing that yes, so pretty. Well, since she's never going to have to do anything about it, we can make her a swinger if we want to. I'm sorry, Miss Saunders, but we're all out of that turkey you like. Oh, well, I'll have the cream cheese on date nut bread then. What about you, Evelyn? There's always the tomato surprise. I'll take the diet plate. Miss Gibson? Oh, uh, my usual salad bowl, please. Crab cakes. Thank you, ladies. Now, back to our swinger. Is it important to you that your dates share your attitudes about sex? Answers, yes, no, moderately. In deference to you, Shelby, we'll mark moderately. Are all the questions on that paper that intimate? Oh, of course not. I'm just picking out the good ones for now. What's the name of the girl who's supposed to be doing this thing? Rebecca Mead. There isn't a single solitary Rebecca Mead in Pasadena or in any of the surrounding towns. Is that what you were doing with those phone books, Sophie? Well, we couldn't very well give her the name of a real person. And Aunt Becky would be so happy if she knew we remembered her. And she was just as zany as you are. <laughs> this is much more fun than when we registered for the draft. You suggested that one. I know I did. What's next, Sophie T? They want to know her age. Oh, uh, 23 is a nice age for a girl. 23. Just old enough, but not too old. Just old enough, but not too old for what, Sophie T? I'm too old to remember. Oh, you know such thing. Well, anyhow, the next thing they want to know is permanent address or temporary address, if any. I think we ought to make her an out-of-town girl staying with a relative here. Oh, you and Evelyn are the only ones with no husbands to explain to. I can just imagine myself trying to account to Harry for... Telephone calls and mail arriving from attractive young men at all hours of the day and night. We won't mind. You won't. But I certainly don't look forward to being in the tub and having to get out to answer the phone for Rebecca Mead. Well, we just put down no phone. Oh, everybody has a phone. Not at a contemporary address, they don't. Well, anyway, I'll fill that part in later. Now, let's see. What, uh, what, are the, what does she look like? Height. Five feet seven. That's nice height for a girl. Weight, 240 pounds. She's not twins, Elizabeth. Would you settle for 125 pounds? If I have to. Eyes, blue. She has to have blue eyes and blonde hair. If she only has one pretend life, let her live it as a blonde. 
Now, the next thing they want to know is her occupation. Swinger. That's a hobby, not an occupation. If it's an occupation, you call it... <gasps> Sophie T. Here comes the lunch. Oh, I'm famished. Mm, you know, I really would like to see me in a pair of those hot pants. You wouldn't. I'm not much at making old-fashioned, so if they're wrong, you'll have to wait until Sophie gets down. Sophie T., the girls are all here. How are they? Oh, mm, delicious. Mm. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh, Sophie T., go, oh, baby, go. go. Well, it's still a skirt. Oh, wait till you hear what happened to Rebecca Mead. Oh, I didn't know her. That's the girl that we made up for that computer dating thing. Oh, where's my drink, sissy? I'll get it. You, you know, I sent that form in, and it wasn't three days till I had an answer, and they sent me a list of five names and addresses, all within 30 miles of here. <laughs> yes, and they told me that my name, I mean Rebecca's name, had been sent to the five men whose names were on my list, and if they didn't work out, they'd send me five more. Sounds almost indecent. Try these. If they don't fit, we'll send you another batch. Sound indecent, it is. Did you get any letters? I got two. One yesterday and one today. So the letters? Yes. Uh, dear Miss Mead, my list from Scientific Associates came, and out of the names on it... Oh, you're turning into a good bartender, sissy. <laughs> Yours was the only one without a phone number, which makes you the woman of mystery I'd naturally want to contact first. <laughs> About myself, I'm a research chemist with a Northern Virginia firm. I grew up in Lansing, Michigan, and attended the University of Michigan. I've been living in this area for about two years now, and am presently taking a couple of graduate courses at the California Institute of Technology. Oh, anybody can tell he's not a Pasadenian. Nobody calls Caltech anything but Caltech. He said he was from Michigan. Go on, Sophie. I'd like to get together with you soon. Perhaps we could make it a dinner date? If you're right, or better yet, give me a ring. We'll see if we can't fix something up. I look forward to meeting you. Best regards, Franklin L. Colby. He sounds like a very good prospect. Research chemists must make a bundle these days. Which makes one wonder why he needs to seek companionship through a computer. Maybe shy. Maybe he's somewhat peculiar. Honestly, Shelby. Sometimes you'd make a person think you could see a lecherous look in Lincoln's eye on a $5 bill. Well, one doesn't know what the artist had in mind when he made that engraving. I wish I felt the same way you do, Shelby. Never a dull moment. Something racy going on wherever you look. I'm not licentious. Just cautious. Could I have another little... Oh, yes. You're at home in our home, dear. Make whatever you want. Can I fix anything for anybody else while I'm mixing? Oh, come on back so we can hear the other letter. I wonder what it would be like if... Say we were girls and this computer dating business was going on. Daddy would never have allowed it. Wouldn't allow me to smoke when I did. One cigar behind the spring house is a little different than putting your name on a public dating list. Come on, girls. Now, here's the second one. This one's short. Hi, Becky. I'm a lousy letter writer, so don't expect much. By the way, what do you use? Carry a pigeons instead of a phone? <laughs> anyway, you can see by my address that we live very close by each other, so why not take advantage, right? Give me a ring and we'll get together for a drink or something. Joe Sandell. P.S. There's a P.S. Don't dye your hair. I really dig blue-eyed blonde. Oh, He's a smart aleck. His handwriting's terrible. Look. What does he do for a living? He doesn't say. I bet he's short. Where's those elevator shoes? <laughs> I wouldn't care if he was six feet tall and rich as Croesus. A smart aleck is still a smart aleck. I wouldn't trust him in a public bus. Well, Becky will answer rather curtly and put an end to the correspondence right there. You aren't going to answer. Well, my dear, we have to do something. Those letters could come on forever. It's a pity to do that to Franklin. Well, we'll just write both of them and say that uh, Becky became engaged and she's gone off to 
Timbuktu or someplace to join her fiancé. Nobody will believe that. Why not just say her plans changed and she went back to Minneapolis? She comes from Omaha. All right, Omaha, but wherever. She went home. The end. That's simple and convincing. Well, the next batch of letters have to be better than these. Oh, it isn't as much fun as I thought it would be. You always say that, and then you have more stories to tell people. Oh, all I meant was, well, don't young men write poetry to a young lady nowadays? I like the image of her flying off to Timbuktu or someplace to meet an archaeologist or something. How about the image of some cards at the bridge table? I feel lucky. Anybody feel like a fresh drink? No, I still have half. Well, I'll, I'll brew up a batch. You all go to the bridge table. I'll bring them. My husband would never believe that we sent him for this computer thing. He thinks I'm so stodgy. My husband hates computers. He says the Democrats invented them to destroy the Republican Party. Really? He says anything counts that fast, looks that slick, has to be a Democrat. <laughs> Deal. I think Sophie owes Shelby 14 cents. It's impossible. That's Harry. Yeah. Harry will say to me, You're tight, Elizabeth. And I would say, Yes, I am. Then he will say, Put your head back, honey. And I will. Then. He'll roll down his window so I can get the air. And I will get very sick to my stomach. I really think it's eating the orange slice that does it. That's what makes me sick. You always say that, and then you make yourself a drink and you put on another orange slice. It's eating the orange slice. It's citrus. I, I think I'm allergic to citrus. Ever since I got that terrible sunburn down at Palm Springs. No, dear. Huh? Drive home careful now. Night. Night, Sophie. Mm. These companies started putting their warehousing and sales and payroll records on one of those computer things. I thought he'd have a stroke what he does when we get a bill from someplace and there's one of those computer cards in it first he folds it 
And then? Dear Miss Me, I got your name and address from Scientific Associates. Dear Rebecca. Dear Rebecca. Let's take a summer together. <laughs> Dear Miss Minute, I got your name from my list from Scientific Associates. Morning, love. Morning. Says it's going to be a lovely day. Wonderful. Feeling all right, Missy? Terrific. There's a letter here from Evelyn Jr., one from the Martins, and here's one for Rebecca Mead. Whoopee. You didn't look or sound tiddly last night. I ate some of Elizabeth's orange slice. Coffee's ready. Can I poach you an egg or something? I'd rather die. Really? I'd rather die. Would you like to see the letter for Rebecca Mead? That might cheer you up. Why don't you read it to me, hmm? Just sip your coffee and you'll feel fine and dandy. Now, dear Miss Mead, I have your name on my list from Scientific Associates. I'd very much like to meet you. I notice you have no phone and would therefore suggest that you could call me. My phone number is 7931299. Or if you prefer to correspond by mail at first, my address is 2769 Kenmore, apartment 12. I'll look forward to hearing from you. Best regards, Malcolm Weston. Sounds like an accountant. Certainly sounds businessy. The more we hear from Rebecca's suitors, the more I'm glad I'm not a young girl on the loose anymore. Smart Alex, dull accountant types. It was Franklin. He sounds nice enough. Why don't we call him up and have lunch with him? Franklin, I mean. See what he's really like, huh? Couldn't do that. It wouldn't be fair. And besides, what could we use as an explanation as to why we were calling him? We could say that we're Rebecca's old maid aunts who stick their noses in all Becky's business. Two little old biddies. Oh. I thought you were serious. You're not serious, are you? Can't just lay dead and wait for to answer my letter. Chicken must move a lot. Guy needs those kind of clothes, got nothing inside. She wouldn't like that. Guy, wild clothes like that. She's got no phone. She must move around a lot. Kind of digs a guy who comes on not too strong, just cool. Yeah, cool. Digs guys with some class. One step ahead of her all the time. Be a break if Rebecca has a little bread. That's a big plus. Yeah. To have a chick with money. Makes everything so easy. Kind of chick doesn't have a phone. Yes, it's true that chicks dig flowers, but they can also dig graves. 
Hey there. At this point, I like to talk about a person that didn't get talked about. Tonight's antagonist in this movie, the character's name is Mal. And I can't help think that it's a subtle hint that they want us to feel that he's maladjusted. Certainly, you see him in that first scene with him. Um, really frightens me that things like that might go on. But they might. This was played by Vince Edwards, who also left us in 96. All these people died in the late 90s. The 90s must have been really rough. He was in Sons of Darkness, Invasion of the Space Preachers, and The Highwayman. Again, that was uh, more cable there. He also did Jake Rockwell's voice in The Centurions, which I liked. But for our older folks, he's probably most famous for being Dr. Ben Casey a long-running hospital show. But he was more than just a pretty face. Yes, yes, yes. He had six albums to his name and played in Vegas and New York, so quite the singer, apparently. Left us way too early. So let's get back to our movie after this short commercial break. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and that candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Back to Creature Features. Weird, maybe. Yeah. Maybe she's a weird chick. Could be. Sure. She could be. And it's a gamble. Always a gamble. A chick will be weird. Now it's worth a couple of bucks. Buy a bunch of flowers. Drive out to her place. She comes to the door. Yeah. Chicks take that. How goes with the book writing, Ma? Great, great. I got two publishers fighting over it. Then I guess you won't sell the movie rights to that guy from studio. Oh, not yet. Pink. Pink goes good with blondes. Uh, maybe. Red and white. No, no it's too flashy. She'll think I'm on a hustle. You're not? Some lucky flowers. No bachelor buttons. Could be a funny peasant from a bachelor who takes you. Got no bachelor buttons. Well, that's okay. Be a wrong move anyway. Too obvious. Yeah, bad scene. What do you got that's cheap? Spring flowers? Yeah, yeah. Give me two bunches of those. It'll look like I spent a lot of bread. <laughs> That'll turn around. A couple of bunches. Two bucks and I come off heavy. Yeah. I'll take a quick shower. Put on a little of that aftershave, lemon. It'll smell good. Drive out to Pasadena. Knock on a door. No. Maybe I'll sit in the car and wait for him to come home. Yeah, I'll wait. Yeah, she comes down the street. Five, seven. Blonde, blue eyes. 23. Great figure. Yeah, I'd know her anywhere. Hi, Rebecca. These are for you. I'm Mal Weston. Right out of her mind. Right out of her mind. The house looks like money. She's probably staying with an aunt or a grandmother or something. Maybe a relative with a lot of heavy bread. 23. Probably taking some grad courses. Where is she? Out with some relatives? Screw me up if she comes home with them. 
blow my bit. Maybe a date. Some guy from the university. No, it's not her style. She wouldn't have laid out five bucks for the computer service. No. No, she's the kind of chick who calls her own shots. This is Dr. Weston. Uh, I've just received an emergency call, and all the party left was their, was their address. I, I need the party's name and the phone number for the ambulance. May I ring you back on your office phone, doctor? Operator, the patient has just had a massive heart seizure. I'm not in my office. This is an emergency. What is that address, doctor? 406 South Rutherford Street in Pasadena. One moment, please. That phone is listed in the name of Sophie Tate Curtis, and the number is 792-1099. 792-1099. Yes, Thank you very much, Operator. And I tried to find another hat that would look good with this dress, but here I am in a Breton again. I suppose it really is my trademark. Shelby is never this late. We're going to miss our table at the Tivoli. Well, we only have three choices. One, we wait. Two, we go on without her. And three... That must be her calling us now. Now, don't scold her, Missy. Hello? Uh, this is Mal Weston. Uh, I'd like to speak to Miss Mead, if I may. Uh, this is Rebecca Mead speaking. Well, I subscribe to the computer dating service you belong to, Scientific Associates. Well, I hope you don't mind, but I tracked your address down. That's how I got your phone number. Uh, could, could, could you wait just a moment, Mr. Weston? What's wrong with telling him on the phone what we're going to put in a letter for Pete's sake? How did he get our number? He explained that, and I'll tell you later. Now, may I return to this conversation without further harassment? No, you may not, Missy. You may hang up that phone and be done with it. You are not Rebecca Mead. She is 23. He and... can't see me on the phone, so how can he know how old I am? Oh, let her talk to him, Evelyn. Stop acting like an old poot. Mr. Weston? I hope I'm not causing you a problem by calling. I, I wrote to you. N yes, I had your letter. I was just about to sit down to answer it. Well, why, don't you, why don't you answer it in person? Look, I'm going to be in, in your neighborhood later. Why don't we have, have a drink someplace? You know, have a drink together. I couldn't do that. Um, you see, I became engaged soon after I sent in that computer form, and I'm leaving for Hawaii to meet my fiancé in the next day or two. We decided that was too complicated a story to tell. Well, I'm only telling it to this one, and he seemed to believe it. I excuse me, uh, uh, there was a noise here, Mr. Weston. 
Would you repeat that, please? I said I'm sure your fiancé wouldn't mind if you and I had a drink together. Oh, that's because you don't know my fiancé. <laughs> then let's not tell him. Oh, I couldn't do that. I think you'd really like to. I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a nice cocktail lounge in Pasadena, the, the Velvet Trap. It's just off Colorado on post. Now, I'll be there at, oh, 530 Oh, I'm certainly flattered, but I... You won't have any trouble picking me out. I'm, I'm six feet two, I weigh 195 pounds, and I'll, I'll have on the... No, I, I really couldn't possibly, Mr. Weston. Yes, you can, and I'm sure you will. Now, look, it's only one friendly hello and goodbye drink. I'll be there at 5.30. You'll be there. Yes, you will. And he poured on the old snake oil so thick. But he seemed nice enough anyhow. Persistent but polite. Shelby, my love, where are you? Well, never mind. You have to meet us at Colorado and Post Street. Are you going? You're not going. Yeah, right away. Of course not. Even in a dark cocktail lounge, I could never pass for 23. 30, maybe. found Sophie G's telephone number and, and called Rebecca Mead there. He said he wanted to meet her. Shelby, you'll never know what you missed. Honestly, you'll never. Oh, it's all that new hairdresser's fault. Mr. Frederick, he takes forever. What happened to Lucille? Oh, she went back to giving pedicures. I kind of like what he did, button back. You look as pretty yeah. as a picture, Shelby. Is that a new dress? Yes. Hello, love. Did you hear about our phone call? Which phone call? There's a young man coming to that cocktail lounge right down there at 5.30, hoping he's convinced our Rebecca Mead to join him. But she can't. There is no Rebecca Mead. Sophie talked to him and told him she was engaged and couldn't come. But he wouldn't take no. Who wouldn't? Malcolm. He said he'd come over from wherever he was and, and wait for her. And so we decided to come and see what he looks like. Sophie T. and Elizabeth decided. And I didn't think the pair of them were safe on the street without a keeper is the actual truth of the matter. But what are we going to say to him? Nothing, just look. That's when he asked us where Rebecca Mead is. And why would a young man waiting for a girl in her early 20s ask us anything at all? <laughs> well, the way things have been going for me this week, nothing would surprise me. You know I found three cracked eggs in the carton the milkman left for me this morning. Oh, that's terrible, dear. We'd like a table, please. A little away from the entrance, but not too far out of the way. We're very nosy. Please, this way. Like four old fashions, please. I don't think he's here yet. What does he look like? He's six feet two inches tall and he weighs 195 pounds. Evelyn kept telling me to hang up so I didn't hear the rest of his description if he gave one. What did we do when he gets here? Just look. And don't you get any ideas about going over to him or asking him to join us, Missy. Mm -hmm. Funny 
believe he didn't come. If he stood Rebecca up, the man hasn't been born who could stand up Rebecca Mead. You're right. There he is. Five twenty. He's better looking than I thought he'd be. I expected a bigger man with a mustache. He looks like a martini drinker to me. Mm, certainly hope not. You're about to eat your orange slice, Elizabeth, and you know you're allergic. I know. But this is the best part. Well, you're over twenty-one. I wonder what he'll do when Rebecca doesn't come. Wrong, Sophie dear. He's having a colon. He's also paying a great deal of attention to that little waitress where a man is waiting for Rebecca Mead. My sister was courted by a boy that looked like him. He was in peanuts. Good heavens! I'll bet he thinks that's Rebecca. I've been waiting for you. I'm Mal Wesson. You mind if I sit down? Maybe we can have a drink. Well, I have an appointment at six thirty. Well, I hope I can make you miss it. How about a drink? We won't have enough time if we have a drink here. We can have a drink anywhere you like. Our Malcolm Weston at all. He was too thin. And she was too heavy to ever be Rebecca. Well, but no matter who the man was or who the woman was, what do we do now? I think it was him. I suppose we could order another drink and see if somebody else comes in that might be Malcolm Weston. What time is it? It's quarter to six. I can make it if we don't do it. Waitress! I put a roast in before I left. Have you seen those new electronic ovens that bake a potato in five minutes? No. It's a really nice place you have here. You in the real estate business? You've got a lot of interesting things here. Twenty dollars, honey. In advance. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars in advance. Now. Trap. Well, I've been called worse. I wouldn't give you twenty nickels. Well, you're one of those, huh? I'm not one of anything. Well, it's been nice meeting you. Now, if you don't mind letting yourself out, I've got an appointment. Wait a minute. Do you know what I did last night? Do you know what an idiot you made of me? Well, let me tell you, Rebecca. I sat in front of your aunt's house, I had two bunches of flowers, and I waited for you to come home. Does that give you a laugh? Well, I don't think it's so funny. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, don't con me. I was there. Well, listen, I think you'd better go outside and get a little air. Shake your hands off me, you fake. Maybe you could pull that $20 routine of the suckers that believe that... Fiance in Hawaii, bull, but not me. I'm gonna call the police. I'm gonna call the police. Show him me, you fool! Take your suit! Police! Well, oh, Dred. If that young man wasn't Malcolm Weston, then I don't understand why he didn't come. He was so positive about being there. Maybe he's shy. He certainly wasn't on the phone. I mean in person, Missy. Some people even break out in hives when they have to meet somebody. You know that cousin of ours? Lord, it's 25 years since we've seen him. What was his name? You mean Casper? <laughs> How do you remember all those names?
What's her name? Brenda Bauer. Brenda Ames everywhere but at the station. Mark the tag with both names so I don't forget them, will you? You got it. She was uh, hit with a candlestick. Where's the corner? Now on his way. You're making this guy sound as guilty as sin. Stop with the cagey act, will you, and explain to your client that unless the coroner declares Brenda Bauer hit herself on the head with that candlestick five times, we've got a murder case here. He's not a prime suspect. His fingerprints don't match the prints on that candlestick. Now tell him to start talking to me and you stop dancing and maybe we can go home. I'm tired. Well, seems reasonable, but I must insist on protecting my client's best interests. Then go out and hire him a lawyer who knows what he's doing. Like I said, I don't care why you went there. I just want to know when you made the appointment and if she said anything to you at all about what she expected to be doing before she met you. Now, is that so hard to answer? Mother, as a matter of fact, we, we had a standing appointment uh, every Tuesday at 6.30. We never saw each other any other time or even talked on the phone. Just uh, every Tuesday night at 6.30. Brenda Bauer, blonde former model, victim of bludgeon murder. That must be Shelby calling us. Hello. Shelby? Oh, no, it's you, Elizabeth. Yes, we just saw it. It, it, it does look like that girl we saw, yes. Um, well, we haven't read the story. Look, why don't you call Shelby, Elizabeth, and both come over here for brunch and we'll talk about it. No, we won't mind. Is there anything they can bring? Yes. 
Some cream and a dozen croissants from Hooper's Bakery. Some cream and a dozen croissants from Hooper's Bakery. And hurry over now. we're all het up over nothing. The girl we saw in the cocktail lounge was much taller. That poor murdered girl is the very self-same girl we saw meet Malcolm Weston and leave with him. But are we sure the man we saw was Malcolm Weston? I agree with all of you. Blessed are the peacemakers, Missy. But there is no way to agree with everybody when everybody disagrees. What I agree about is we ought to find out. What? If the murdered girl was the girl we saw, and if the man was Malcolm Weston. And how do you propose to do that? Pass the preserves. Huh? Gotta find out if it was her. velvet trap to find that little hostess was bad enough. But coming here to her home, Missy, well, she wasn't there, was she? No, she wasn't. So we had no choice but to come here. I really think we should forget this whole business and go back home. Don't be an old poot. All we're doing is what any citizen should do when they have information that might assist the police. No, Sophie. A citizen goes to the police. She doesn't go marching around like a covey of Sherlock Holmes. You're mixing your tenses, dear. And giving 50 cents to that custodian at the cocktail bar to get the address of this hostess. I think 50 cents was too much. Suppose she's still asleep. It's almost 10 o'clock. Everybody's up by 10. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we all wound up in jail. I really wouldn't. I was arrested in the speakeasy during Prohibition. Shh. Here we are. Let me do the talking. I'm sure no one could stop you if they tried, dear. Yes. Good morning. We were in the Velvet Trap last night. Do you remember? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Isn't that the most adorable little <laughs> baby? <laughs> and we'd also like to know if you remember this young lady being in also last evening. It was about uh, 5.30. <sighs> That's Brenda. She's in every evening, nearly. <laughs> but she was in last evening, wasn't she? About 5.30. Yes, she was. And she left with a young man, didn't she? Uh, I think so, but I'm not really sure. Why do you ask? Did she do something? Then you haven't seen the paper. I excuse me, but if you don't tip that bottle up a little when you're feeding it, she's going to get bubbles in her little tummy. Oh, my eldest boy had the most terrible time with gas bubbles when he was bottle fed. He's an attorney now. Well, thank you so much, and we hope we haven't disturbed you too much. Come on, girls. Oh, you're going to break a lot of hearts when you grow up, you pretty little thing. Stay cool. Get to the bank. Get my money out. She thought she was too good to have one lousy drink of me. I can tell her off. Cop, lucky at me. It's lucky. Who doesn't know who I am? Be cool. Keep walking to the bank. Get my money. Smile. 
You really must have a screw loose, Sophie. The man might well be a murderer, and here you are walking up to his door to say, how do you do? All I propose we do is go in and knock on his door, and when he answers, we'll apologize for disturbing him and say we knocked on the wrong door. But he might have a gun. So he uses candlesticks. But he still could have a gun. We'll never know if it was our Malcolm Weston until we see the real Malcolm Weston. I've never seen a murderer. Suzanne, honey, are you there? Suzanne, dear, it's Aunt Sophie. Sophie, tea. Suzanne, dear. He isn't here. He let the water run. I've never in my whole life seen any place as messy. Shouldn't somebody do something about that faucet? Don't touch anything. Fingerprints. You ladies looking for somebody? Who, who might you be, sir? Name's Tubbs. I'm the building manager. And who might you be? I'm Mr. Weston's aunt from New Hampshire. He doesn't seem to be here. Do you have any identification to prove that, ma'am? Can't just let anybody into a man's apartment? Oh, we were just leaving. Yes, uh, excuse us, please. Who might I tell him was here? Oh, don't tell him we were here. We want to surprise him. Gotta know it wasn't you. Gotta know. Tell you how lousy you are. Just answer this phone and I'll tell you what you are. We're not sure that the man that poor girl left with was our Malcolm Weston. We could cause him a great deal of discomfort if it wasn't. The police are well equipped to deal with the matter. We're not. Oh, where's your sense of adventure, sissy? Tucked away with my library card where yours should be, thank you. Who wants tea? Sure did take off in a hurry, didn't he? What would you do if you'd just kill somebody? Pete, shut that one up, will you? Quiet, His license plate number's out already. We could get lucky. If he had any class, he'd give himself up. Well, there's a chance. He's got no prior arrests. Could be he has a conscience, huh? Sure he has. That's why he hit her five times. Panic, maybe. Possible? Pete, uh, what's the guy's name we're looking for? Malcolm Andrew Weston. It's for Malcolm. Now write it down for me, will you? Yeah, got it. Hey, just come to get you. Morning. Lieutenant? It's uh, Mr. Tubbs, building super, Lieutenant Helm. Mr. Tubbs was telling me earlier there were four older ladies over this morning looking for Mr. Weston. Yeah, one of them said she was his aunt from New Hampshire. Didn't sound it. Pure Pasadena, I'd say. If you'll go down to your apartment, Mr. Tubbs, Sergeant Lutz will have someone get a statement from you. Glad to oblige. Well, Lieutenant, what did Weston do? Parking tickets. Too many parking tickets. I didn't know they sent detectives with a search warrant after you for that. Give man down there right away, Mr. Tubbs. Have to be the same four that were over at the Velvet Trap this morning. Went to see that hostess after. Looks like they got a jump on us. Got everywhere before we did. Yep. You want me to uh, put out a pickup for them? Oh, yeah, sure. I can just see that. Cars and paddy wagons rolling in, loaded down to the gunnels with little old ladies. Terrific. Oh, 
check on Tobes. Malcolm, you had to do this to me. your son is an attorney, Shelby, but that doesn't mean you know all about the law. Now you're frightening Evelyn. Just hush. I'm simply pointing out that we could be arrested for withholding evidence. We did not withhold evidence. We just had our suspicions, and really that's all we have now. Well, I hope we get a policeman who loves his mother. We will, dear. I can't just keep driving around. Maybe there's a pickup out in the car. I have to leave it. Can't risk going to the airport. Can't go to the train or bus. I have to wait until dark. Find some place to wait. All because of you. All because of you, Rebecca. Take him down, Tom. We'll get a statement later. Shelby had an adventure. Isn't that always the way? She'll be all right now. Sergeant Lutz was number one in his first aid class. Shelby is prone to swoon. Don't give it a thought. Are you feeling better, dear? That was a terrible man. What was it he said to you, ma'am? That, sir, will go to my deathbed with me. If he'd said it to Sophie T, she would have told. Sophie T? Oh. Well, now, which of you ladies is going to tell me why you came here? I'm Mrs. Curtis, and that's Mrs. Gibson, that's my sister, Mrs. Tryon, and uh, Mrs. Saunders is the lady that fainted. Pleased to meet you, ladies. We were told that you are in charge of the murder investigation of Miss Brenda Bauer. Yes, ma'am. We saw her at the Velvet Trap cocktail lounge just before it happened. 
Did you ladies happen to go by that establishment, say, about ten this morning? Yes, we did. You must be a very good detective. We also visited the hostess that works there just to make certain that the murdered girl was the one we saw. Where else did you ladies go? Who knows we went somewhere else. I was just inquiring if you did, ma'am. Suppose we did. Suppose we thought we knew who that poor girl left the cocktail lounge with. But we couldn't be certain. Should we tell you who we thought it was? We wouldn't want to cause any difficulty for someone who was perfectly innocent. As it happens, ma'am, we knew you went there. What I'd like to know is how you ladies knew to go there. Did one of you know Mr. Weston from somewhere? Yes and no. You see, we made up a lady, and we named her Rebecca Mead, after an aunt of Mrs. Tryon's and mine. Why did you make her up? Well, we surely couldn't have put down one of our own names. Well, look, maybe we'd better start from... No. Pete, get a stand one here to take this all down. We'll want an official record. Thank you for the smelling salts, officer. Oh, my pleasure, ma'am. This is going to sound silly to you, I'm sure. No, it won't. Go the on. name of the computer company was Scientific Associates, if that matters. Could be very important, thank you. You're welcome. We didn't want phone calls, so we said that Rebecca didn't have a phone, and we asked the young man to write. Three of them wrote. One was a smart aleck. Malcolm was very inventive. He looked up the address, found Sophie T's last name, and then looked it up in the phone book, I suppose. I was really impressed. I'm sure. <sighs> I'm feeling so much better now. All right. All right, I'll show you too good. You're gonna pay off. Make me trouble. All right. Well, I think we've got it all straight to there. Then what? That's all. We had his address, so we went over there to get a look at him, but he wasn't home. Do you ladies realize how lucky you are that he wasn't home? We would simply have told that him. That you were looking for somebody else. But suppose he had remembered seeing you in the bar, hmm? You don't think we did the right thing? No, ma'am. It was very dangerous. I told her it was dangerous. Oh, don't cop out, Evelyn. We all went right along with the whole thing. You ladies were very lucky. Now, I hope we can rely on your cooperation. You, you'd like us to mind our own business? I wouldn't put it quite that way, ma'am, but yes, I would. Then we will... I'd really appreciate that. May I ask how you located Mr. Weston? His fingerprints for the FBI. I think that was very enterprising. Would you like me to find out what that man said to Mrs. Saunders? We know that character, ma'am. We can guess what he said. What was it? Probably. Oh, yes, I would.
I, for one, am more than glad that this morning is over. Wasn't that Detective Hallam nice? It would be a pleasure to be arrested by him. <laughs> Put our house under surveillance. An unmarked police car just pulled up across the street in case anybody's interested. Doesn't look like a police car to me. Nor to me either. I know the fuzz when I see the fuzz. Matter if I swear on a stack of Leon is never going to believe this. Well, he certainly won't believe it unless you tell somebody what the man said to you when you fainted. And then they can bear you out. Now, it doesn't matter how you try to get around me, Sophie. I'm not going to tell. There's some things a lady never, ever repeats. If he said it to me, I'd have told. Oh, no, you wouldn't. Oh, I have to go up and get out of these shoes before I strangle. <laughs> Don't try to con me. Where is she? We know who you are, so you might just as well pack up and take yourself away from here, Mr. Weston. I said, where is she? He wants to see Rebecca. Now, don't dance me. Where is she? I think we should phone that Mr. Hallam, Sophie T. No, 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 no. You're not phoning anybody. Now, where is she? Young man, this will come as a shock, I'm certain. But there is no Rebecca Mead. That's right. Don't give me any of that garbage. There never was a Rebecca Mead. Not lately, anyhow. Rebecca Mead was our aunt. And she's gone to her reward years and years ago. So there's no reason for you to be here at all. Now, you listen. So did he. And you're frightening Shelby. Mrs. Saunders. I'll do more than that. She happens to be the... Mother of an attorney at law. Shut up! That's very rude, you know. You just shut up and tell me where that lousy tramp is. We've told you. Now, look, I talked to Rebecca Mead. No, no, you, you talked to Sophie T. She just said she was Rebecca Mead. Oh, Evelyn, I think you better take Shelby and Elizabeth home. There's no point in all of us. No. No, no. Nobody's going anywhere. Now, we're... We're all going to stay here until she gets here. Now, now, you just go over there and sit down. Come on, all of you. Move. Move. Move, move, move. One more. Now. Not there, there. I explained to you that Rebecca Mead went to her reward years and years ago. It wasn't her I killed. He's confessing. Sit. Now, look. Either you tell me where that tramp is or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the bunch of you. Why would you do a thing like that? That doesn't make sense. I don't think he's quite well, Sophie T. What do you mean by that, lady? She meant nothing at all. Please try to control yourself, Mr. Weston. Don't Mr. Weston me. I'm going to find out where Rebecca is or I'm going to beat it out of you. Oh, you wouldn't do that. I think he would. Yes, I would. He's killed once, Sophie T. He has nothing to lose. That's right. Nothing to lose. Then neither have we. If you intend to kill us, we have nothing to lose in trying to stop you. And if you think that we're going to sit quietly by while you take your candlestick to us one by one, you have another think coming, Mr. Weston. We'll do what I tell you. Why should we? Where is she? If he comes too near, take your hat pin out, stick him with it. think you're doing, lady? I'll get my rat tail comb. It's aluminum. You get something to protect yourself, Evelyn. The, 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 the scissors on the desk. What? And get something heavy for what? me. The paperweight would just be fine. Huh? Are you about finished with this game, lady? Pay him no mind, girls. A lot of mind. You're gonna tell me where that broad is. You don't know the nightmare she put me through. And if the only way to pay her back is to kill every one of you, that's what I'm gonna do. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand that any violent action on your part might bring about some rather painful injuries? Please. Try to understand. 
There is no Rebecca Mead. We made her up. There never was. Really. Never. Fool! The leaves! They're right outside. Sophie saw them! I'd rather you hadn't told him that, dear. jumped on him. Well, uh, the uh, district attorney may... He'll probably want to speak to you ladies and... Well, thank you very much for your assistance. Oh, you're most welcome, Mr. Hallam. Now, I think we'd better be going. Unless there's something else. Oh, no. There's nothing else. Bye. Thanks again for the smelling salts, Officer Lutz. How'd they do it? I don't know. I mean, he really could have killed them all. Even without a gun. He could have done them all in. He could have. He's not a pro. He killed that Bauer girl in a panic, in a fit of passion. Maybe he didn't get panicky or passionate. <laughs> Well, I hope this whole business has satisfied your hunger for adventure, Missy. Of course, dear. For what? Don't encourage her, Elizabeth. She doesn't need prompting. It's hard to believe we really captured a murderer. Am I the only one who realizes that we came within inches of being killed? I think we were much closer than that. So do I. Much more. It's only four o'clock. What do we do now? I don't know about you girls, but I'm famished. I can eat a little something. It's almost cocktail time. Isn't there a nice little place just around the corner? We'll go find one. Is she still bothering you there? Truth to tell, I forgot all about it. We could drive if you want. No, the walk will do us good. <gasps> it certainly has been one hell of a day, hasn't it, girl? I did like how he starts backtracking and, and trying to figure out what he's done. Hi there, I, I hoped you liked the film. You know, like I said, this was a very light suspense. I like how, you know, they, they all could have died and, well, well let's go find a bar <laughs> afterwards, you know. Let's, we'll walk, it's good for our health. And then we'll get drunk at an old age. Those ladies should be wearing red hats, I think. But really, Mal, uh, if, if there was a person like Mal, and I'm sure there is, out there now, people really wouldn't say he's the bad guy. They'd say he's somebody who, um, 
just needs a little understanding. He's just frustrated. A lot of frustrated guys out there. Now, if you're not frustrated, you can come see me at a variety of conventions this year. So far, I'll be down at San Diego Comic-Con, uh, which, of course, is July 18th through 21st. I'll be there all week. If you see me, stop by and say hi. I'll be doing interviews. I will be at a table at Petaluma Comic-Con at August 11th. I will also be at a table at Silicon Valley Comic-Con uh, August 16th through 18th. They've given me a lovely big corner table next to the bathrooms, which is good if Mom is there, but she's not, so I think that's probably safe for everybody. And I'll be at Horror Hound Weekend, September 6th through 8th, my first time there. I hope it's a good one. So again, if you see me at my booth, stop by, say hi. I have some other conventions coming up that they're not confirmed yet, so stay tuned. Now, other things you should stay tuned to, speaking of cable, is Netflix. This week on Netflix and Chill, we have Clinical. You know, we go to a doctor because we're not feeling well. We go to a therapist because we're not feeling at all. What if your therapist is having problems? And, and trust me, they're all pretty nuts. I mean, uh, I know somebody went to a therapist and the therapist would have to cut their session short because they were having an emotional reaction to what was being said. By the way, Doc, if you're out there, say hi. I'm sure he's not watching, but his daughter might be. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's what we have in clinical here. We have a doctor that's been through something horrific and keeps doctoring. It doesn't go well. So check out Clinical on Netflix. Now, just a quick little FYI, I've been picked up by Butcher Media. That just sounds good there. Butcher Media has a new horror host. Don't know where that's going to send me, but we'll find out. And before I go, you know, it's often been said the problem with today's society is that they don't drink from the skulls of their fallen enemies. I picked up this little thing over at the Sinister Creature Con, and this is made by Carrion Creations. Each one is unique. I really like this little doll head. I can pretend I'm slurping its brains out. I wonder if it tastes like beef or chicken. Well, that's our show for this week. So until next week, when we bring you a movie you've never heard of and never wanted to watch. Remember, he's Bob, I'm Al, and we'll see you at the movies. Remember, kids, if anyone ever tells you the Necronomicon isn't real, pick up a newspaper and read them the obits.